Hi, I'm Dr. Margaret Cochran, and I want to welcome you once again to another edition of Wisdom, Love, and Magic. Sam and I are taking a break, so we thought we'd prioritize the time and visit with you. Today we're going to talk about the brain, one of my favorite topics. I get loads of questions about how it works, and in particular, how ADHD affects it. So before we begin, please find yourself a comfortable spot, relax, maybe put your feet up, have a warm beverage, take a few long, slow, deep breaths, and just let everything else go for a few moments. The brain, specifically the prefrontal cortex, which is located behind your forehead, provides us all with something called executive functioning. Now bear in mind, no pen intended, that executive functioning can be influenced by many factors such as hereditary, head injuries, strokes, and so forth. And all of us, whether we have ADHD or not, have strengths and weaknesses in the area of executive functioning, or EF as I often call it. That said, executive functioning is made up of several skills, including planning, organization, time management, task initiation, working memory, metacognition, emotional regulation or self-control, sustained attention, flexibility, and perseverance. Now, while I've listed them all individually, they actually function in concert with one another. And to demonstrate how this works, let's pretend that you're going shopping. So first, you need to plan out which stores you want to visit and how to get there. Then you need to organize your shopping list and choose any applicable coupons. Then you need to employ task initiation, which means you start off on your journey. Before purchasing anything, you have to consider what items you already have and what you might need. That would be metacognition. Time management will allow you to calculate how long your trip will take and how this will impact other activities in your day, making sure there's enough time to get everything accomplished. While you're shopping, you will need to use working memory to recall what you came to the store for in the first place and to keep track of your phone and sunglasses. Self-control or self-regulation is needed to avoid purchasing things that you don't really need or to keep you from overreacting to situations or other people. If the store happens to be out of something you were looking for, then flexibility is required to make any necessary substitutions. You have to keep focused on the shopping and associated tasks at hand so that you can finish them and get home in time for supper. And finally, perseverance is required because even if you're tired after all that, you have to be able to wait your turn in line to buy your purchases and be able to deal with traffic if needed to see your errand to completion. So as you can see, executive functioning skills are needed every day to navigate both the most basic and the most complex of tasks. Now imagine how challenging it is to deal with life, work, and or school if your executive functioning skills are at best hit or miss. Think about how frustrated and disappointed you would be with yourself and others would be with you as well if you were always late, always behind, always forgetting chores, tasks, assignments, deadlines, commitments, and promises over and over and over again. Simply put, when you struggle with executive functioning skills, you struggle with daily life. And speaking of that, let's take a peek at someone's daily life if they're an ADHD adolescent. It's Saturday morning, and uncustomarily, you've set the alarm, and it rings. You open your eyes enough to be able to hit the snooze button, and then you promptly close them again. The alarm goes off a second time. Once more with the snooze button, it's hard to wake up and get out of bed because mostly morning is not your best time. Why? Because an ADHD brain likes to stay up late and sleep late but not today. Today's going to be different. That's why you set that alarm on a Saturday. No third snooze alarm for you today. Uh-uh. Unlike some other days, you'd rather forget. Today you're going to get up, get started, and be uber productive. You swing your legs over the edge of the bed, sit up, and try and make your first decision of the day. You think to yourself, I should have a good breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day, right? But what about intermittent fasting? You read somewhere that that's supposed to be good for you, too. So do you eat or do you wait to eat? Which one do you choose? Which one is best? Um, never mind. You'll decide later. Yeah, later's good. So you check your to-do list and you discover that it did not magically shrink in the night as you'd hoped. It's still enormous. Where do you start? Everything on there looks daunting. Number one, as always, is clean your room. There's so much stuff in there. 
What do you keep? What do you toss? How do you prioritize things? And where do you put it all? Too much, too hard. Uh, the room's not that bad. You'll deal with it tomorrow. Tomorrow works. Maybe homework. Yeah, that's good. Homework. Okay. It says here on your list that for history, you have to write a five-paragraph essay on the Monroe Doctrine, whatever that was. Uh, and for English Lit, you're supposed to compose a character analysis of Romeo Montague from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Dumb and boring. And then there are the 20 assignments that you still haven't completed in math. You want to do these things. You know that you won't get into college or please your parents or get a good job unless you do these things. Why can't you do them? And you know the painful truth is you have no idea where to start. So your go-to in stress is procrastination. And you think maybe a little break would help. So you decide to play video games, Snapchat with your friends, eat, watch mind-numbing TV or YouTube videos. God, you think I'm such a loser. All right, all right, it's 11 o'clock already and time's a ticking, but you promise yourself that you're going to regroup and get back to work no later than 2 o'clock. And then suddenly, it's 5 o'clock. The extended deadline that your teacher granted you to turn in your already late homework has passed, so there is yet another F or big fat zero in the old online grade book for you. You can already hear what your parents will say. What is wrong with you? Why don't you just do your homework? And your teachers who look at you with either pity or scorn and say, but you have so much potential. Stupid parents and their expectations, stupid teachers, stupid timeline, stupid school. Your parents are already furious with you because you've broken multiple promises that you really did intend to keep. And this latest fail, it's just one more stab in the heart. In your room that you said could wait, well, it really can't. Why? Because it's a disaster, and it's spilled out once again onto various places in the house, and it's encroaching on everyone else's space. Your stuff is on the stairs, in the kitchen, on the dining room table. It's everywhere. Face it, you leave a snail trail wherever you go. The dishes you said you would do aren't done, and your dirty, still unwashed clothes are stinking up the laundry room for the second week in a row. And you find yourself alternatively filled with self-loathing and rage. It doesn't seem fair that everyone's always on your case. And besides, homework is stupid and boring. Who cares about Shakespeare anyway? And math, who needs that? And what's the big deal about chores? You're too busy for chores and homework. They aren't really necessary. They're just made up to waste your time and annoy you. It's your parents' house anyway. Why do you have to do their chores? But deep down, you know that other people get things done and aren't always behind the eight ball. People like your perfect sister who gets all A's, never studies, and is always on top of everything. Oh, and your cousin Lionel. All you ever hear about from your parents and his parents is that he never forgets an assignment. He gets excellent grades. He is never late. He always keeps his promises. He never forgets anything. And he is always captain of the team or president of some club or other. Why can't you be more like Lionel? Nah, nah, nah. You hate them all. And you love them too. Life sucks. Another day in ADHD land. Sound familiar? Don't panic. It can be frustrating sometimes, but there are lots of hacks or workarounds to keep you happy in a non-ADHD designed world. We're going to talk some more about ADHD, what it is and what it isn't, and some good compensatory techniques next time. But for now, some and I have to go back to work or we'll be late for our next patient. You see there? A little time management, touch of planning and organization with just a soupçon of perseverance. And until we meet again, I'm Dr. Margaret Cochran, and both Selma and I are wishing you oodles and gobs of wisdom, love, and magic.